Give us 60 minutes and we'll give you Nelson Radio every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. on KTLK AM 1150. With 29 years in the mortgage business and an array of top-level guests visiting the show, Nelson is in a unique position to bring you cutting-edge information on real estate, business, finance, and law. If you have any questions for Nelson or any of his guests, give him a call at 888-888-2136. That's 888-888-2136. Or check him out online at nelsonradio.com. Nelson Radio. Welcome back to Nelson Radio. We are broadcasting our KTLK AM 1150 show from SciArc, downtown Los Angeles, the Southern California Institute of Architecture. And we're moving along with John Enright, the undergraduate program chair. And John, as we spent some time together before we went back on air, you mentioned something that was fascinating to me, and that is that SciArc ranks now just behind Cornell. That's right. Uh, our undergraduate program didn't rank last year. But yeah, exactly. How does that happen with, as you uh, said, 500 students, what, 90-odd staff members? That's right. How does that happen? Well, I think, you know, it starts from the beginning of the school and the way it was founded 40 years ago. Uh, as you know, I think Ray Cappy may have been uh, on your show earlier. Um, you know, Ray founded the school uh, very much as a, a time of the 1960s as an alternative way of educating young architects, and it's held that spirit, uh, which is very hard to do to maintain for 40 years. So there have been different uh, faculty members that come through the school, uh, that experiment, that are interested in innovation, and of course the target is always changing. Nothing static in architecture. What was interesting maybe 10 years ago, even five years ago, is completely different now, and we're always looking five or 10 years ahead. So. I think that spirit uh, uh, exists in the school super strongly right we now. We spoke earlier about the, the rigorous uh, entrance process, yeah. but you know, I didn't really stop to think about what's the process that's required for somebody to come be a, a teacher here? I mean, how is that selection process? That's got to be very, very tough. Well, it is. We look for you know people that are leaders in the field. Uh, we have a really, uh, I think, diverse group of faculty here that come from all over the world. Uh, as our student base is, uh, you know, uh, the 50 undergraduate students that just started this fall are from 19 different countries. Amazing. Um, mm. And, of course, states from all over the United States. So the cultural diversity that we have at school is reflected in the faculty as well as the students. Do you think that uh, cultural diversity contributes to the, cr the creative quotient that comes out of here? Absolutely. I think you'd argue that architecture has been a global enterprise, uh, even more so in the last 20 years. All the architects uh, that are in the city of Los Angeles, many of whom you know, have been practicing as much outside of uh, their own country and their own city as much as in it. Mm -hmm. uh, that would, of course, follow suit that we would have an international-based mm -hmm. and recognized faculty that is literally flying all over the world, giving lectures all over the place, yeah. different schools, and that kind of interconnectivity is what makes this place so special. John, I've noticed that many of the faculty are actually practicing architects. So they're, they, they actually know what's going on in the practical world as, they, as they're teaching these young minds. That's absolutely true. I mean, uh, our, of our design studio faculty, all of them have their own offices in one way or another. Now, that may be they have big offices. They may have small offices. They may be doing housing projects. They may be doing experimental in installations, but all of them are involved in the practice of architecture. They're out there doing things, pushing the field. Listening to Nelson Radio right here on KTLK AM 1150. You'll be able to see these homes if you click through at nelsonradio.com. And with any interest, we want you calling us. 888-888-2136. That's 888-888-2136. And John, I have to ask the question, your practice, Griffin mm -hmm. Enright. Tell me what would describe one of your homes. Somebody co drives by uh, in a community and sees a home and goes, "Oh, that's a Griffin Enright." Uh, well, um, I would. Say, well, I'd hope they would look at it first. I mean, it, <laughs> there's so much in architecture. Actually, how many buildings did you drive by to get here to Cyark 
and how many got them to turn your head uh, or got you to turn your head probably not a lot uh, not to say that's what we aim for in architecture but certainly anybody who has a contemporary practice uh, is interested in pushing architecture to where we haven't seen it before so I would say if you drove by one of our houses you I would feel it would be successful if you said what is that I want to learn more about that project so it, it, it would create an invitation I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's how architecture engages in our environment. It actually makes you think about something that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Is that a baseline? Would you say that if you were driving by a Tom Main home and go, oh, that's a main home? Uh, I don't know if you'd necessarily say it was a, a home that he designed, but it certainly I, I would think he would agree. Uh, and, and I worked with him for many years, mm -hmm. actually. So I would say that he would want you to be able to, he would want to say that his architecture challenges someone to think about it, to look at it in a different way. How that engages the public, that's another story. And we spoke about that with Ray, how the ar architecture, much like art, inspires an emotion that's and right. a reaction. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the fact is, in the city, we have a lot of banal buildings that, that don't really do that. And, of course, there's things that can be done in subtle ways. I'm not talking about every building should somehow look like an explosion on the street corner. <laughs> right. Far from that. Uh, in the case of residential projects, for instance, that I do, you know, each one is a collaboration with the owner and the client, and they bring things to it, and each one's different because of that. You know, I was thinking earlier, uh, and something that you said, and people ask me when I think about why I didn't get into coaching. Uh, uh, at, at a professional level and the fact that SciArcs all of their professors are practicing architects versus the majority of the head coaches in the NFL never stepped foot on a professional football playing hmm. field hmm. and I think that I think the successful teams uh, the, the, and it's, you're starting to see this more and more now but I think that in order for the spirit of something to be preserved down the line, I think it has to be staffed by people who know what price they had to pay to achieve the success that they're at. I know I keep coming back to that paying the price, but I, you know, if John, I, is there that kind of rite of passage for well, architecture? Uh, yeah, I would, uh, you know, in some ways I would agree with that. I think that, um, you know, to be successful in architecture, we say this to young people, you have to really love it. Uh, you have to work extremely hard. Uh, the uh, monetary uh, rewards are not that great, actually, uh, despite you know uh, TV shows and movies that <laughs> seem to, to paint it otherwise. So you really need to be passionate about it. It mm. isn't something to be taken, well, that sounds like a good job, I should do that. So because of that, I think in schools, we have to, as leaders, you know, really express to students, you know, what it requires, what they're getting into. Uh, and of course, it presumes that all the faculty here, and they are, are super enthusiastic about their offices, about the work they're doing, about the student work, and that rubs off to the students. Um, you know, the, the coaching analogy, I think that, that might be one, you know. I mean, I would think of would be Doc Rivers, right, who, you know, coach of the Clippers, who, who automatically comes with a lot of respect as a former player. And that helps somehow the communication of the team. It really does. For it their really goals. Does. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there's other examples of non-player <laughs> coaches. Some, but that's <laughs> something that resonates throughout all of our exposure to this uh, is collaboration. And we're excited to be broadcasting from... SciArc, the Southern California Institute of Architecture right down here in Los Angeles. We've enjoyed your time to, with, with us. Thank you, John. And we'll be back Thank in you. just a minute. You'll be able to see these photos, the examples of John's work from Griffin Enright and so many others at nelsonradio.com. Contact us direct, 888 That's 888 We'll be right back. You're listening to Nelson Radio. This segment brought to you by Insurance Incorporated. Nelson is a licensed lender under the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 331060. This is Nelson from Nelson Radio, and it's important that we talk about a very serious issue. We had bad lending practices that led to the mortgage meltdown, but now we've got the challenge of deplorable customer service coming out of the meltdown. Bottom line, getting a new loan can be like pulling teeth without Novocaine. 
I've got the solution. Academy Mortgage and my team are injecting into the industry real performance and real accountability. Here are the facts. Appraisals in less than a week. Rate guarantees that can improve if the market goes down. Purchase transactions with our market-exclusive close-on-time guarantees and refinance transactions in as little as 30 days. Who would have thunk? Guaranteed rates and guaranteed performance from your mortgage lender. Call me, Nelson, an accountable loan expert for nearly three decades, direct at 888 That's Nelson at 888 888 or at strongcreditrewards.com.